Power Rangers have an amazing run of comic books from the boom line of comics. You don't need to even be a Power Rangers fan to enjoy these incredible stories. If you're wondering where you are in the internet, you found the Complete Story series by Comic Storian. We give you the most epic recaps to your favorite storylines, including music, voices, and sound effects. This is part two to Power Rangers Pink. In our last video, Kimberly Hart learned that Goldar and Virto were slowly converting people into monsters to try and draw out the Power Rangers. Kim found out that Goldar was trying to steal their power to power up his new Zord, Typhonus. But after a fight with his partner, Virto, Goldar found himself inside of Typhonus while he walked the Zord into the ocean. Deep below on the ocean's floor, Kim struggles with Goldar as he tries to open the hatch to escape. Goldar pushes Kim back, pulling out his sword, stating that he cannot think of a fate worse than being saved by a Power Ranger. Kim takes out the Sword of Light, stating that she sure can, and it's being trapped with him and drowning. Goldar charges in, swinging the sword down, and Kim shouts that fighting is a waste of time. They need to work together. But rather than listen, Goldar continues his assault. Kim tries to tell him that he knows what he has to do, unless he wants Virto to tell Rita and Z Zed about his little solo operation. She tells him that they both don't need to do this anymore. They need to take down Virto together. They need him alive to change everyone back. As the water in the hatch begins to fill, Kim asks him, so this Zord is made up from all of our old Zords, right? Would there be a way to get one that flies off of Typhonus? Goldar thinks about it and he says that he just merged all of their old Zords with the technology of Cyclopsis. Any of the larger Zords would be too entwined with Typhonus's power. Kim then asks, what about a smaller Zord? Specifically, her Firebird. Goldar groans. Ugh. It would be possible for your small and pathetic Zord to separate from Typhonus. Now I can see why you selfishly needed me to escape. While Goldar gets to work rerouting the power, Kim makes her way down to her old Zord and begins to power it up. As the Firebird begins to break free, Goldar jumps out yelling, HOW DARE YOU BETRAY ME! And Kim shouts back that she was actually coming back for him. She isn't like him. While the Firebird flies out of the water, Kim spots Virto's army and heads their way. Goldar shouts that she has a clear shot. Destroy Virto and his monsters now! But Kim tells him no way, they need Virto to change everyone back. While the two of them begin to argue, Goldar tries to take control of the Zord's weapons, but Kim manages to kick him away. Goldar then opens up the back hatch, stating that he's done playing by her rules. Their deal is off. Back on the ground, Zack and Virto see the Firebird flying, and Zack cheers Kim on, but Virto slams his trident down, calling Typhonus to return. Suddenly, the Firebird begins to shift and starts to fly low, and as it passes by, Virto holds out his trident, and he cuts down the side of the Firebird's wing, causing it to crash land. Zack starts to run towards the Firebird, but as he does, Virto grabs him and tells him, I guess I'll have to start with you. A second later, Sergei jumps in tackling Zack out of Virto's grasp, and he tells him, Hello, my new friend. I'm here to save you. Before Virto has a chance to react, Goldar swoops down grabbing him and begins to fly off. As the two of them begin to struggle in the air, Goldar grits his teeth, telling him, This is now a personal matter. But Virto bites down on Goldar's arm, forcing him to let go. As Kim and the rest of them make their way back to the fight, Trini tells Kim that they need to do something. Zordon is fading fast without his power. Kim suggests that maybe they give the power back and manage on their own. But then Alpha radios in, telling them that they they have to complete the mission and save the people first. He does, however, have good and bad news. The good news is that they should be able to manage Zordon's power for another 24 hours, but he would like to say something first. Through the static, Zordon appears telling Kim that she recently spoke about the bravery of her new friends. For them to win, she's going to need a full Power Rangers team by her side. Though the power will be weaker, their true strength will come from those beside her. So take the sword and make your team. Kim holds out the Sword of Light and as it shines, both Sergei and Brit step out as the blue and the red ranger. Sergei asks, what is this honor? And Kim tells him not to thank her, thank Zordon. They're gonna have to make this sacrifice worth it. As the new team steps out of the cave, Kim sees Goldar, and Kim says that it doesn't look like he wants to fight. He turns his back, telling her, no, not with you, but Virto must pay. Kim extends her arm, saying that he needs them. She gets it, but the Power Rangers are gonna make the rules, all right? No harm to Virto until everyone is changed back. As Goldar shakes her hand, he tells her, fine. But once that's done, all bets are off. A short while later, everyone hears the rumbling of Typhonus as it walks up onto the shore. And Virto shouts to everyone, It's funny to see Goldar working with the Power Rangers. Rita and Zed would love to hear about this. And then he begins to laugh as Kim tells everyone to form up. They have a villain to take care of. 
Typhonus starts to make its way towards the town, while Kim and the others handle the monsters on the ground, and Goldar focuses on slowly taking Virto down. But Virto manages to grab Goldar and he tells him, See? I've got this whole thing handled. I will destroy you slowly. While everyone watches, Kim begins to think of a plan, and then Kim hears Alpha yelling, ay 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 Five shark cycles fly down, and Alpha says he's doing what he can. Those cycles should help, since he gave them flight! Everyone jumps on their cycles, and they rocket off into the sky, firing down on Typhonus. Virto yells, this is all pointless! And Kim takes her bike and aims straight for the hand holding Goldar. She then crashes the cycle into the hand, causing it to release, and she starts to fall. After Trini attempts to catch and misses, Goldar swoops by, grabbing her, telling her, this is useless. We're gonna have to take him down from the inside. Kim thinks to herself that she was just saved by Goldar. That's gonna take a minute to sink in. Goldar drops the two of them onto the Firebird as Kim's mother makes her way towards them as the monster that Virto has changed her into, and Goldar quickly jumps inside of the Zord. While rewriting the power, he says that if he can get this pathetic Zord operational, he can signal Typhonus to have it return for repairs. Seconds later, the Firebird starts to rumble as it lifts off and begins to reattach itself to Typhonus. The three start to climb through the inner workings of Typhonus, and Kim shouts, Remember the deal! Once they get to the control pond, Virto laughs as he attacks, but Kim's mother growls and charges at him. Virto grabs her by the face, telling her that she is his to control. And then Virto feels something grab him by the neck. Goldar picks him up, telling him, this ends now. And Kim jumps in, kicking him, shouting for him not to do it. As Virto breaks free, Kim's mother grabs him and holds him in place. And Goldar says, I gave my word, I wasn't going to kill him. But Kim says that he would have to understand why she's a bit hesitant on that statement. Once Goldar gains control of Typhonus, Kim radios in that they got the Zor and Virto secured, and Trini radios back, good, because they got things finished up on the ground as well. A short while later, Virto begins changing everyone back to their human forms, and after changing both Kim's mother and Sergei's family back, Kim tells Trini to keep an eye on things. She's gonna talk to Sergei and Britt for a moment. The three run into a back alley, and as they change back, Kim says that it seems like no one remembers anything of the time of while they were changed, so they should go see everyone. They all run back into the streets, hugging their families, and as Kim welcomes back her stepfather, she sees Goldar waiting for her. Zack calls out that all of the people have been changed back, and Kim says that's great, she'll handle things from here. They all walk into the back alley, and Kim tells Virto, thanks for changing everyone back, and he says to never speak of this again. Goldar tells Kim that they will bury this mess, and no one will know of what happened, but make no mistake, she saved his life, and that is the only reason he respected her wish. Goldar turns and grabs Virto and says, but now that deal is complete. And it is in our interest to finally end things. Kim shouts for him not to do it, but Goldar thrusts his sword through Virto's chest. And Kim cries, why did he kill him? As Goldar flies off with his body, he tells her that if he catches her speaking of this again, it will be her family next. Kim watches as Goldar flies off and thinks that everyone should get a second chance. But Goldar is evil. She turns the corner and sees Zack and Trini kissing, and the two quickly go back to asking, so everything good? Kim whispers to Trini, how long has this been going on? And Trini says that it's been happening. But when they saw each other, there were more important things to talk about. While everyone gathers around, Kim explains that Goldar has killed Virto, but they cannot go chasing after him since they need to give Zordon his power back right away. But that's when Alpha radios in that they've finally been able to contact Tommy and the rest of the Power Rangers. The transmission from Tommy begins to play and he calls out that they need help. They're losing power and they need assist, but the transmission ends. Kim shouts that they can't leave them like this. How much longer do they have the sword? And Alpha tells them, about 12 hours. So Kim says they have Typhonus, so they can at least go and try to help. Alpha tells her that he was able to get Tommy's coordinates before the signal was lost, but the only other Zords left are Tor and Titanus, so they can assist Typhonus by getting into space, but the rest will be up to them. Kim turns back to Sergei and Britt and tells them that they might be new, but it's morphin' time! Up on the planet of Orland in the Vika Galaxy, Tommy tells everyone that he knows that they're all tired, but if they make it through the z punnies and back to their Megazord before Serpentera gets them, they might live. Rita shouts that Serpentera has deactivated the Megazord with its disruptor! They have nowhere to run! And Tommy calls out for the team to move, but while they move from rock to rock, everyone begins to hear something. Up in the sky, Kim and the others fly down on Typhonus, and Tommy says that he recognizes those Zords. It's Tor and Titanus. Zed shouts, what allies the Power Rangers have to come with their garbage Zords! And Kim calls out that Alpha and Zordon sent them. Meet the type in his Ultra Zord. Tommy radios in that he's not sure who they are, but they have perfect timing. Kim then asks Trini and Zack if they're ready, and they both shout, yeah, but it's kind of weird piloting these things. Zack rockets off, crashing into the disruptor on Serpentera's head, and Typhonus begins kicking away at the putties. Sergei points out that Serpentera is on its way to them and has already passed Titanus and Tor's defenses. Typhonus braces for the impact, but Kim closes her eyes and a blast fires off, hitting Serpentera in the neck. Over the radio, Tommy shouts, with a white ninja falcon sword to power up! 
the rest of Tommy's team all begin to jump into the Megazord, and Kim radios out that they have Serpentera on the defensive. They need to go on escaping. Tommy tells her no way. They are leaving this planet as a team, and Kim silently tells herself he's always the leader. Together, the Megazord and Typhon has pushed back Serpentera, and they begin to take off. Tommy says that he has to thank them for helping. They really couldn't have done this without them. And Kim nervously shouts back, It's no problem! Now let's get everyone out of here. As the two groups leave the planet, Zack radios over to Kim, telling her that they should probably tell Tommy that it was them when they get back. But Kim tells him no. They have to get Zordon his powers back first. And in the back of her mind, Kim feels sad that she didn't even know Tommy and the others were off-planet. It's like she's forgotten everyone. She lands Typhonus back on the beach and Zordon starts to make contact, telling her that it seems like they were quite the heroes today. So let him be the first to thank them all. He goes on explaining that what they have done in the past few days is nothing short of extraordinary. With or without powers, that said, it's probably best to put the Sword of Light back into hiding. Kim holds out the sword, telling him of course. They wouldn't want to risk it falling into the wrong hands. And Trini asks what about the Zord, and Alpha tells her that the Zord is going to be an interesting specimen, and he's pretty sure that Billy will be excited to study it. That also reminds him, he's giving everyone communicators in case another emergency arises. That, and so they don't lose touch. As Britt and Sergei say their thanks, Kim tells Sergei that she's sorry that they didn't get to watch that action movie marathon like he wanted. And he shouts, who cares? He got to be the hero of his own movie. That's the best part. Afterwards, Kim begins to head back home, telling herself that being a Power Ranger never really ends, does it? And then she groans, grabbing her pillow, as Trini sends a message telling her that Zack and her are going to go down to the cafe and she should totally join them. The three sit down for coffee and Trini says that they were supposed to go to Paris before heading back to the camp. But Zack adds that it feels weird to just leave these people here. Kim tells her it's not really a bad thing, but they should go. Paris is a city of love and they deserve it. Trini then asks what about her and Kim says that she's going to stay here and spend time with her family for a bit. And yes, this time she will keep in touch. She won't be letting that happen again. But as it gets later, Kim takes a ride on her bike and she begins to think about everything that has happened. She tells herself that maybe not being a Power Ranger isn't the only way to be a hero. But she can't stop thinking about what happened to Tommy and the others if she hadn't shown up. She wouldn't have even known that they were gone and that is a sickening feeling. Over the next year, Kim goes back to training for the next Pan Global Games, but lately she's been rather distracted. She asks herself how is she supposed to face just being different from someone you love. It's not enough to just be a woman in pink at his side. It's also about wanting to do the same things in the same way. And even as Tommy leaves the Rangers, she is just someone who once had the armor for a moment and passed it on. Either way, they can stay heroes with or without the Morphin Grid. And that concludes Power Rangers Pink. Now, it doesn't outright tell you that this is the reason that she did the Dear John letter, but it does give you an idea of where her head was going and why she would have led to writing the Dear John letter. Maybe we'll get a continuation to Pink, but in my opinion, this does kind of leave you with the situation of why she decided that she needed to go that route. Anyway, what do you guys think of the Power Rangers comics? I know you've been loving them. We've been doing as many as we can on the channel. Next, we're going to do the sequel to the movie, and then we're going to have to take a little bit of a break while we wait for the next story arc involving the alternate dimension evil version of Tommy and all that stuff to get to its next story arc so we can tell you that one. Because oh my god is Boom doing an incredible job with these comic books. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up the date on the Power Rangers comics and also don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic Story and that way you can follow up to date stuff as to when I decide to do more of this. I'll see you next time right here.